And a very good welcome to you all to episode 146 of Thank Furlough, well, actually of ICV TV. Uh, and it's Thank Furlough, it's Friday once again. I am today the thorn between two roses. <laughs> Not only do I have uh, the star of the show, Jackie Mount, with me, but also the star of uh, the other side of the show, Amy Copeland, is here, and she's actually going to kick off today because she's going to tell us all about next week's Inspire Tour, which I know hundreds of you have already booked for, um, but we're still getting a few questions, and she's just going to fill in a few gaps and tell you how important it is that you join us. So, Amy, thank you for coming on, squeezing us into your very busy schedule. What can you tell us? <laughs> Hello. Yes, so the Inspire Tour is next week. And the exciting news is that we are opening up our virtual venue from this afternoon at 3 p.m. So don't worry if you've booked in and you've yet to receive your login, you will receive that at 3 p.m. And if you've been to the Bookkeeper Summit, then you will, uh, you'll feel right at home straight away and you'll definitely know your way around. But we do have a unique new website for the Inspire Tour. And we've also got an app so you can look for Inspire Tour in your uh, your phone's app store and, down and download the app. And all the features are available on both. So if you're out and about, uh, which no doubt you will be very busy, you can, uh, well, you've got no excuse really for missing any of the sessions. But we've got five full days of content next week. We're keeping the days relatively short um, so you can get some other stuff done as well and everything's available on catch up. What I do want to say is, unfortunately, we've been unable to uh, organize the subtitles for live events, which I'm very sorry about. Um, and we will be making subtitles available on all the on-demand recordings. So you will be able to uh, read along if you need to, but those will be available as soon as possible. And for any, any pre-recorded sessions, they will be um, subtitled from the get-go, but most of our sessions are going to be live next week. Jackie is doing a bit of a sort of VAT and Brexit developments update, which I think is absolutely not to be missed. We've got Rebecca Bennyworth coming back from the Bookkeeper Summit to, to do a general tax update, which will be super useful. And uh, we've got lots and lots of partners joining us to talk about everything from MTD to pricing to confidence. And one of the really special things about the Inspire Tour is that we've got a member sharing their journey and their top tips for success every single day. So if nothing else, do join us for those. And, um, and as always, lots and lots of networking. So I don't know if you guys would like to do the demo. Do you think that's all right, Gary? Yeah, no, absolutely. So Go away. The demo? Um, okay, let me share my screen just so I can share everybody what it looks like and share my top tips for success. Um, so can you see that? Here's the Inspire Tour homepage. So you'll recognize it if you went to the Inspire Tour, but don't worry too, uh, sorry, if you went to the Bookkeeper Summit, but don't worry if you didn't go because it's relatively uh, intuitive and there's a lovely menu here, um, which will take you to all the fun areas of the show. So here in the reception area, we've just got a little bit of information and some um, links to some of the great sessions and our exhibitors obviously and our speakers but you can get to those from the top as well. So if you went to the more recent International Women's Day event we were actually trialing a different software and it had this habit of sort of picking you up from wherever you were and putting you into the session when it went live so you didn't really have a choice about whether you were going to go there or not and at the time that seemed like a good feature so nobody would miss anything but it wasn't really, uh, it, it, it didn't fall very well because um, people found they were in the middle of a conversation and suddenly they were just moved somewhere else uh, within this virtual venue. So that's why we've, we've returned to the Bookkeeper Summit platform because we love it so much. Uh, but what it will do, although it won't pick you up and take you to a live session, it will show you here that there is a live session. So I've set one up for us so I can show you what it's going to look like. So when you go to the agenda, you can skim through the days here and you can also look for more information here, rate sessions, see the tags for them and add stuff to your calendar and get little calendar invites. So if you go to, if I go to today, you can click here to join the session. So as soon as the session is live, you'll be able to join it. And then as I say, the recordings are available afterwards and this is how you will access them. So if I click on this live session now, 
it will start playing our fun, our fun video about the Wikipedia Summit. One of the cool new features that I think you'll like is if you just hover over here, um, you can play it on your TV, which is handy. Um, you can do picture in picture, but having said that, I have not been able to find the link here. So, okay, so if we're doing a live, it doesn't obviously work on pre-recorded videos, but if you do, if we're doing a live presentation, which most of them are live, you can actually click on a little button, a little icon here to bring that picture in picture, which means it will follow you around and um, the rest of the venue and also you can check your emails or something like that. A bit like Zoom windows can do as well. So I apologize that I didn't realize it didn't work on a pre-recorded video. Um, but that's a sort of cool new function. You can look at all your attendees who are coming um, and you can search for those depending on various different factors and look at other speakers. And this is a cool function so you can see who's online. I hope this is sort of triggering great memories for you if you went to the Victor Summit. One of the most popular areas of the event is going to be the event social feed, the event feed here where you can just post videos, photos, say something to people, introduce yourself if you've never been before. And maybe tag somebody you know or tag your branch. And uh, Kirsty St. John is, a, is an early adopter here because she's a speaker. Senior. Well, I've spoken to her about that actually. She's, um, she's flexible. Whether she's she? Oh, I always thought she was definitely a Sinjin, I, I, I fear of death, but anyway, never mind. Ah, was well, she married in, I believe, so. Ah, uh, well. I'm sure she's probably here, so she, she can tell me if I'm wrong. Um, so the event feed is, is fun. It's a nice way to interact um, and, and get warmed up for doing, doing possibly having a video meeting with somebody or going to the lounge. So the lounge again, very, very uh, popular area of the summit. What you can do is sit yourself down in one of these lounge tables and wait for somebody to come and join you. And we'll have a couple of tables based on topics, but you can have just short chats with people and don't worry, you won't end up sharing your video with anybody until you've been, you've had your permission expressly granted. So there's, there's no worry of accidentally displaying yourself without knowing. So that's the little lounge area for short sessions. And then there's also the rooms breakout area. Now these are very similar, except what we've done is actually set up a room for each of our branches. So don't worry if you've never been to a branch meeting, though I'm sure if you're here, you probably have been. Uh, you can just go and join, sit down and join one of these meetings. Now, a lot of our branches are going to be there at the event, but you can go and hang out with other people in your area, e even without your branch chair. And again, you just click to join it and you will be asked for permission before you, you share any videos. So if you don't feel like sharing your video, you can actually do, you can just chat and say, hello. I don't know if you can see that at the bottom of my screen there. Doing a little oh. chat message. Yeah. Um, and so for some of us, you know, we just we don't want to share our camera or perhaps um, you know, share your audio. But if you want to, you can select that in the bottom right hand here. And um, and you can also always see who is in the session with you, which is very nice. Karen Simmons has just sent in a chat message. When does the social feed, etc., go live? 3 p.m. this afternoon. 3 p.m. You didn't mention that, so that's great. 3 p.m. Unless you're Kirsty Sinjin. Uh, and you've got uh, exclusive access as a speaker. So they've been um, milling around, testing it out. Because she's speaking. Because she's speaking. So the advisory the, because... council, yeah. this is a session definitely not to be missed. We've got the advisory council coming together on Monday, if I can find it. Here we go. Monday afternoon to discuss how to pass an AML inspection. Now, our advisory council have sort of been, been through the test and had all of their practices inspected. So they know firsthand what that experience is like, and they can tell you how you can be confident in any future inspection that you may have. That'll be a really nice interactive session where you can ask questions and find out the real, the lowdown. And Suzanne Proctor has just joined and said, terribly sorry, sorry, but she's uh, late for arrival. Can you advise on the web address for logging into the Inspire Tour? So uh, can you just quickly nip back over that and the, the app? Because it might be that the app is better. That's really good, uh, really great question there, actually. What I will do is just pop that in the chat. As long as I can't find the chat. Um, it is inspiretour.hubelo.com. 
Hubilo being H-U-B-I-L-O. So I'll just pop that in there. Um, and there's a little link that just shows you the agenda. So that's a sort of um, landing page. And then there's a little link to join from there. Now you won't be able to join yet because it won't recognize your email address. But as of 3 p.m. this afternoon, it will recognize your email address and then you can log in. So if you recall from the Bookkeeper Summit, what it will do is send you a unique access code by email once you've given it your registered email address. Now, uh, you can search for that. It'll be coming from ICB, sorry, it'll be coming from Team ICB. And it will probably end up in your junk or in your other inbox. So don't worry too much if you can't see it straight away. And if you have any issues joining um, or you can't get that access code, just give ICB a call and we will get you access. And then once you've logged in once, you're fine to log in um, automatically after that. Uh, Nadine yeah. Harrison has just uh, messaged in there. Uh, obviously, she's a, an old hand at this because she says, is there a feature this time around to set reminders for webinars you're interested in and to mark them as viewed afterwards? Yes, there is. Yes, that is a new feature, isn't it? So yes, thank you for reminding me. You can make notes, but here in the agenda, you go to the agenda from the menu tab there and you click to add it to your calendar. Wow. And then... Amy, oh, I feel like it did have a call, didn't it? Yes. Amy, Torben has come up on the question line saying he can't find the Inspirator app in the Android Play Store. And uh, I have to go okay. to search and I haven't got it either. I tell you what I would do. I'll try and get a link to it. I have an iPhone. I'm sorry. I've got to yeah, it, it's, it's not automatically appearing in the uh, Android Store. So I don't know if um, Alex maybe can help us and see if he can find us a link for the, I have had it confirmed it's there, but last year it was, there was a bit of a lag, I think, the Android app. But maybe Alex can help us and see if there's a just, oh, i tell you what, I've got a link. I thought the old days of VHS versus Beta had all gone behind <laughs> the back, aren't we now? And a lot of a lot of our young young members, because I know they're all spring chickens, uh, won't know what v, uh, VHS versus beta actually means. But there always seems to be two parallel technologies, and never the twain shall meet. You know. Well, funny you should say that. There's this whole new form of app development where you you don't do a native app; you just do one app. Anyway, um, that's a discussion for right. next time. But yeah, we will give you the direct link. It may be possible that you need to search for Inspire 21, which may or may not have a, a gap in between. But we've got a direct link to that, which hopefully Alex will uh, pop in the chat. I think, is that about it? We've got some exhibitors. Um, so we're doing things a little bit differently here at the Inspire Tour because this is a slightly more uh, intimate event, you could say. We've got one exhibitor online each day of next week. So we've got the wonderful No Mesmer, whom we have recently accredited, so definitely worth hearing from them. And they will be speaking on Monday. On Tuesday, we have Sage, and they're talking about their, their sort of end-to-end -end, uh, tax compliance solution, which works very nicely on Tuesday, because that's uh, a really fun technical day about um, tax and VAT and Brexit and all that kind of fun stuff that you bookkeepers love. On, Wednesday, we've got Verna from HMRC coming, and she and Jackie are going to be discussing making tax digital and the latest developments, and Free Agent are heavily involved in that day, and talking about why the, the latest raft of MTD is going to mean great growth for bookkeepers. So please do pop in and see them, and Centre, another newly accredited software. I'm hearing such great things about Centre from just everywhere, about how, how much they can help you with your workflow, and your practice management. So definitely worth hearing from them. They'll be here on Thursday. And then the lovely auto entry is coming back. So they were our sponsors for last year's Inspire Tour as well. So they're talking about automation, how you bring your clients on the journey with you and get even the smallest, least tech savvy clients to come with you. So all of the exhibitors are there. And um, as I say, one of them each, uh, one of them per day, but you can go and see their booth and find out what they've got to say. Drop your business card off with them if you like. And uh, you can also, if you want to, set up video calls with people in a kind of more formal manner by, um, by setting that up with them. That's not set up just yet, but it will be during the event. 
So you can make a beeline for that member that you heard speaking at the Book Keeper Summit who really inspired you and share your details with them. Just to remind anybody who went to the Bookkeeper Summit, there is a little bit of an idiosyncrasy with business cards in that if you download the app, you can share business cards with other attendees, but you can't do it on the website, annoyingly. So you'd have to just do that manually in the chat. So you can chat to anybody. So if you go to the attendees list here and I see Gary, I can send him a little text chat and just send him whatever I like. Hello. So everyone's going to have a message for me now say hello. Um, that's gone well up to the top there. I hope you can see that. And, um, and then you can track all of your conversations as well and just keep up to date with people. I think that's about it. Other than there is a leaderboard, but for some reason I can't see it at the moment. Um, so like there was last year and we had Morris Leach storming to the top of the leaderboard, you will be rewarded for your interactions with the event. So the more sessions you see and the more people you meet and the more times you like something in the feed, uh, you will get to be crowned as top of the leaderboard if you're very lucky. But at the moment, um, Kirsty St. John is at the top of the leaderboard, or Kirsty St. John. So do see if you can you can beat her to it. So that's something you, you know to get involved with if you're into that kind of the gamify, gamifying of CPD events. It's not all serious. Um, we can also have a lot of fun while we're doing it. Right. Yeah, um, I don't want to talk about it too much, but it is my current obsession. So I don't have any questions. And I'm more than happy to answer them. Just have a look and see what I, is there anything else come up there? Oh, you can see the leaderboard. Claire Kendall says I can see it on the mobile app, leaderboard that is PS. You're winning, Amy. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, as I should be, frankly, because <laughs> I've had the, the first bit of access. But Claire Kendall, again, is another speaker. The Lincolnshire branch chair, co-chair, sorry, and um, is, is going to be sharing her journey on Wednesday as part of the free agent day. So again, not to be missed. And she's keeping it relatively short and sweet, so no excuses not to be there. So yes, Karen Simmons, you can type the who below in the app store. And then I think what you do, you then select Inspire Tour as an event within who below. But there is a dedicated native app for us as well. I'll stop sharing my screen and then that will enable me to access my right. emails and post it in the chat. And just to say that having had a, a two week gap from the last uh, Thank Fellow It's Friday, uh, because last week um, Jackie and I both uh, took a day off, um, you're now going to not a two week gap because we're not doing Thank Fellow It's Friday next week either because it's all about Inspire. And Jackie's going to be working her socks off doing other things on that anyway. Um, and we'll be back in a fortnight's time. But by which time uh, we will have gathered our powder, ready to uh, um, shoot away with uh, whatever episode number that will be by then. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, thank you for that, Amy. Um, just to say that uh, you and your team have pulled off a good one already. I can see you've, you've spent a lot of time on this. I know you, I know it takes a lot of doing, but the members are generally very appreciative of, of how it all works. And I think that this Inspire Tour is going to be as big a success as all the others have been. And I think over the years, we've got better and better and better at it. Then faced with lockdown, we, we turned virtual and uh, no blip. In fact, we, we got more people to that than ever. And I see that Kirsty is back on. Uh, she is definitely here. I thought for a minute she, she deserted us, but not. <laughs> Found the app on Android after searching for Hubelo. Thank you. So it is available. And Kirsty, are you St. John or St. John? Is she going to come back? I just, I'm pretty sure I've discussed this at length. I think yeah, she kindly it. accepts St. John if, to be unaffiliated. Well, that's because she's a lady. She would, wouldn't uh, pick you up on something like that, would she? You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know we go back. <laughs> Seen her comment, she's come back. She says either. <laughs> she does say either. No, oh, well, there we are. I've been sticking um, up for Sinjin for so many years. Kirsty, that's it. Now I'm done. Right. Oh, so sorry. We've done the, the Inspire to app twice now. Uh, the link, you basically, you've got to follow the link to get the app from the, the Google Play Store for Android. 
just because it doesn't show up yet, something to do with search engine optimization. Um, but you can also just download the generic Kubelo app and then find the Inspire tool within that. But I think it's more fun if you've got something that actually says Inspire tool on your uh, right there. See, that's where, that's where the thrill is. Um, so do see if you can find the dedicated Inspire tool app, if you can do. And then just to say also, because we're not doing ICD TV next Friday, we are instead doing the Epic Branch Quiz. It is something that we used to really enjoy at the Bookkeepers Summit of yore. Um, and we did it as part of the members dinner. It will be a little bit different this time. You may have to bear with us, um, but we'll be going into those breakout rooms, hanging out amongst the branch. Hopefully some of your branch chairs will be there to uh, help you get, get your winning answers but you can um, self-organize as you will. And there are prizes to be won. There's all sorts of debates about how we're gonna make it fair because I know some of, you, some of the branches are huge, some of you are just getting started. Um, but there, there are good incentives for turning up at 1.30 p.m. next Friday and joining in on the branch quiz. So don't miss it. Brilliant, thank you for that, Amy. Um, I think we need to uh... Thank you and say bye for now. Uh, anything else we'll, we'll try and handle later uh, because I can see Jackie is waiting to get her presentation up. Um, but uh, yeah, we're looking forward to meeting you all next week for Inspire. I'm uh, going to be opening up the session just to say hello. And I'm told it's five minutes. So it's short hello from me. But nonetheless, uh, we will be there kicking it all off. And don't forget, you don't have to be there actually on the day at the particular time. It can all be downloaded later. For how long, Amy? How long is it available for? Um, the actual sort of one-to-one -one messaging and the lounge and all that kind of stuff um, will be available just for the week. And then recordings will be available for up to three months afterwards. Great. Yeah. So Not time, really. But don't let that put you off doing, watching everything as soon as possible. No. Okay. Yeah. Well, be ahead of the game. Make sure you get in early. Don't wait for three months. Uh, put Please do record your own CPD points. So we can see how many videos you've watched. But obviously, we don't know if you've, if you've done done your best. So uh, do update your own CPD, please. And it's one CPD point for every hour of CPD you get for summer. Okay. We're done. Thank you very much. <laughs> I will go. Thank you very much. And I thought I was difficult to get off. I must run into <laughs> Talking of which, Jackie, hello, how are you? Hello. Hi, how are you? <laughs> right, fire away, all yours. Yes, thank you. Right, okay. Um, as Gary said, obviously, neither of us were here last week. So uh, actually not that much happened last week. But uh, this week, there's been quite a lot coming out. So let me just uh, have a look here. Okay. So let's try and go through the various bits and pieces then. Um, just a reminder, the VAT deferral, remember we're going back to the VAT from April to June uh, or March to May, I think it was, um, from last year, the VAT deferral. Uh, the applications for those quarter, uh, monthly direct debits close on the 21st of June. So if you've got clients that haven't signed up for that yet, you've got another week, I think it's a week Monday, that is, that it closes. Um, and remember that if no agreement is in place or if you don't already have a payment plan in place for that, uh, all deferred VAT has to be now paid by the 30th of June. Now, that's the end of uh, this month. It's only two weeks away. Um, and if you've got clients who are being particularly difficult about this, you might actually like to remind them that after the 30th of June, if there's no agreement in place and they haven't paid their VAT, they're going to be hit with a 5% penalty and or interest depending on uh, how long it takes to pay that back. So we'll just keep on at that one. I'll mention, well, I won't mention it next week because obviously uh, we won't be here next Friday, but um, that's the last time uh, we'll, we'll, we'll hear about this one probably. Okay, a uh, bit coming in on the SAIS grants. Um, I'm getting quite a lot of queries on this now because obviously if you have clients whose tax year ended on the 5th of April or the 31st of March, um, you're starting to finish your year-end accounts and possibly to do the self-assessment returns or to send the self-assessment returns uh, off to somebody else to do. Um, the applications for the fourth grant is now closed. That's the one that finished on in February. 
and the applications for the fifth grant open in late July. Now, uh, we don't have a date yet for that, um, but interestingly enough, this time, the grant is going to be split. You'll either get 80% of your taxable profits, which is what we've been getting up to now, or you'll get 30%. And just to remind you, if you haven't picked this up already, it depends on the reduction in your income from last year. So we are looking at your turnover between April 2020 and April 2021. Now, I don't know, that's obviously, if you take that inclusive, that's 13 months. So I'm not too sure where the actual dates are. Uh, the gov.uk website simply says April to April. Now, if your turnover has decreased by 30% or more in the year, then the grant that you get for the fifth grant will be 80% of your average three months trading. So that's exactly the same as all the other grants. It's capped at 7,500 pounds because it covers a period of, well, actually it covers a period of six months this time but it is the average of your three months trading but this is going to take us up right through to the end of september so uh capped at seven thousand five hundred pounds but if the turnover has been reduced by less than 30 percent in that annual period the grant will only be 30 percent of your average profits so the maximum cap of that is going to be 2850 that's the first time this has happened so you do need to watch out for that and you will need if your clients are applying for this, they will need to be able to confirm um, exactly by how much their turnover has gone down. Now, don't forget that this is going to be recorded when you do your self-assessment return for uh, taking you up for the year 2021 up to March. And at some stage, HMRC are going to check this. Now, they are doing reconciliations for this. So you've got to be very careful. Now, we do have a number of members who have clients who have it does appear now been applying for these grants and they shouldn't have been because don't forget um agents uh, were not able to uh, apply for these grants and we've got a number of members who've got clients who they now believe have incorrectly um applied for this and what we're recommending is that you go back to them and say look these are the reasons why we don't think you should i don't think you should have applied for this we think it's got to be paid back um, if not, HMRC will pro probably fine you. And if they still refuse to do anything, then unfortunately we are looking at a whistleblowing or possibly even a SAR. Now, I'm not going to go into that any more details today. I've spoken to Mike Jardine about this, and um, there is definitely going to have to be some form of a report done. But we'll probably pick this up in a completely separate situation, but we're dealing with a number of you already um, on that. And HMRC will start contacting individuals who are eligible to apply for the grant from the middle of July. Now, if you're not eligible for the full fourth grant, you won't be eligible for the fifth grant either. So again, that's because if you didn't do your self-assessment tax return by uh, the relevant date from last year, or you, the, the profits are too high or something, all those criteria that, that have to be there. And of course, the extra one is that the um, 1920 tax return wasn't submitted by I think it was March, the 2nd of March. So let's just pick up again on reporting, reporting the, for the SAGE grant on the self-assessment returns. Grant income must be reported separately from the training income. Now, I did see a message from someone earlier this week to say they'd actually lumped it all together in trading income, but you do have to report it separately. So do make sure it's separated out. You can actually pick this out. Um, I know that uh, some members are having issues with clients who have had the grant paid into their personal account rather than their business account. And therefore, our members as agents don't have access uh, to exactly how much has been received. But I'll pick that up in a moment. So if you're doing a self-assessment for return, the SAIS grant goes into box 70.1. The short return, it's box 27.1. If you're doing a partnership, so if your income has come into a partnership, the grant, it's box 9.1. And if you've got the short return, the SA200 for a client, it's box 3.10A. Now, I'm not going to go into those because when you come to do them on the relevant form, it is there, it is labelled, it is fairly easy to see um, exactly where that's got to go. Remember, um, 
grants 405 are going to be reported in the current year's tax return so the 21 to 22 tax return so the the the, the uh, submission that we're doing at the moment for year 2021 is only grants one to three now there is an exception to reporting this grant if you have a partnership that distributes the grant among the partners now i haven't really looked into this in any great detail but there is an exception to the rule for this and it's to do with the timing of when you report it so what gov.uk says is and this has come from the gov.uk website where the SAIS grants are not retained by the partnership but are distributed to the partners the grant becomes part of the partnership trading income which is taxed according to the profit sharing arrangements in the basis period ending in the tax year now this is different so it may be that if it's a partnership you're reporting this in a slightly different way and in possibly even if it's in a different tax year so watch out that if you're doing partnerships you need to go in and do a bit more research on that depending on how that grant was split up but this is come up this has come out sort of this week or this week or last week from gov.uk so now let's have a look at where the agents because this is a new bit of information which is interesting as i said and we all know tax agents couldn't apply for the SAIS grants themselves it had to be done by the individuals just we could just tell them now if you have uh all already got a 64-8, that's the tax agent uh, agreement, the authorization to speak to HMRC uh, on your clients for self-assessment, that does not automatically cover the SAIS grants. Now, this is an interesting one that came up this week that you might be interested in. You do need to get an additional consent from your clients to HMRC in order for you to maybe speak to HMRC about the grants. Now, it depends on whether you're asking before you put the SAT return in or after, because if you're doing it before you submit the SAT return, that's when you've got to have additional information. So what HMRC are asking for is written consent is preferred, but they will give consent if the client rings them. That's the number to ring, 0300 200 3310. So you'll be able to see that if you want to watch this again, you'll, you'll get that number there. But what the client must give you is the client's name and address, their UTR and some form of signature. So I don't quite know how they're going to do this over the phone, plus the name and address of the agent. So that's what happens in order to speak to them. If you've got a query about the SAIS grant before you put the SAT return in, you've got to get the additional authorization. However, what is interesting is that if you want to talk to HMRC after you've submitted the tax return, the current 648 is acceptable because once that figure has gone on to the tax return and you have authorization to speak to HMRC about your client's tax affairs, then you can discuss the saves and they will discuss the figures with you. Now, the sort of thing that's happening is they can uh, discuss any box on the return. So if you weren't aware that the saves grant has been paid and you've submitted the tax return, and that box is has been left blank because your client said no 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 i didn't get anything you can then ring hmrc and they should be able to talk to you about the grant that's been issued so that's an interesting one now i don't know how this is going to pan out i've literally seen this in the last couple of days so if anybody uh, is in that situation and sort of tries to go down this route i know there are members who've already submitted sap returns for their clients um it would be interesting to see how that goes um, and the other reason is that the SAIS grants uh, may have been amended by HMRC now. Uh, so there might be a mismatch on the return because there may have been a repayment or there may have been a difference and you've reported the wrong figure for whatever reason. <clears throat> so again, if you've got any anything coming up on that, do let us know and we'll try and follow that up. It'll be interesting to talk to you about that. Uh, reminder on furlough claims. Claims for May close on Monday, the 14th of June. That's this coming Monday. Now, I suggest you get them in before that, because obviously from Monday, you're all going to be tied up with the Inspire Tour. So I would get, get your furlough claims in before Monday morning. Um, HMRC are still now carrying out compliance uh, checks against the flexible furlough claims. They are starting to look at what's being claimed against what's been go going through the RTI. So uh, they're starting really now to home in on 
not the odd error that perhaps you're out by a couple of pounds. That is not going to be an issue. That never has been an issue. Or if you're using the calculator and it's this one figure and you put a slightly different figure in, that is not going to trigger an investigation. This is aimed at the fraudulent claims that are being made. And we've all heard about this and we've talked about this before. Remember that from the 1st of July, the grant, the says, uh, sorry, the CJRS is reduced from 80% to 70%. So we're back now where we were in the summer, looking at working out what your furlough claim is and only claiming 70% of it. So uh, I think the calculator that I put up for you to just give you some idea is still there, it still works. Um, if, if, uh, if somebody tries it and it doesn't work, let me know and I'll, and I'll do some more work on it. So from the 1st of July, um, the employer has got to contribute 10% of the furloughed wage um, because the worker still gets the 80% of the furlough hours there. So the employer starting to put in the 10% exactly the same as we did last summer. And also, of course, they're paying employers national insurance and the, and the pension contributions. And from August and September, that reduces again to 60%. So employers have got to top up the remaining 20%. Now, we don't know what's happening yet about the possible reopening of everything. We're waiting to hear, I think, Monday. I think um, we're going to get an announcement about what's happening with opening up. But if certain areas are not opening up fully, this is where we could start to see some more redundancies coming through. So that's going to affect the claims anyway, because don't forget, if you've got someone on a notice or a redundancy notice, the employer cannot claim the furlough for that period of time. So it's going to be interesting over the next three months uh, to see how this goes. And I think you're going to have to uh, watch out for any anomalies that are cropping up on this one, please. The calculator is available on gov.uk. Uh, so you can go into that and, and check your furlough claims. I think the claim process is going to be exactly the same as it, as it is now. Now there's a link there um, to how much you can claim. That's just a link there if you can uh, get, get on to that one. Um, and don't forget there are templates available for multiple claims. Uh, one is from 16 to 99 employees and a one is for over hundred employees. You can now upload those via a template. So you don't have to go in and put every single employee in uh, on an individual basis. And what's happening if you're using the template for more than 15 employees, it's useful because it, the template itself will highlight certain errors. So, example, if the information has gone in in the wrong format or their details are wrong or there's duplicated or missing information, it will highlight that on the template before you upload it. So hopefully you should be able to get it right uh, through using that. Now. The other thing that crops up on this is when you're using that template, do not put negative numbers in. Now, what, what that means is if you're making, if you're paying back from earlier claims, don't put that reclaim on the template. You have to put the full amount for this month that you're claiming. And then I think later on in the, uh, somehow in that load, you're gonna have to do the repay and, and amend the total, but the, reclaim, the repayments do not go on uh, those templates. So watch out for that. I don't know whether anybody's tried to use the template yet. If they have, I'd be interested to get some feedback on it. OK, so that's most of the bits on that few other bits of information. Now, what I picked up this week that I had a look at, I must admit I didn't see it all, but there is uh, there are quite a lot of HMRC videos going around. And there is one on uh, COVID related SSP, which is quite useful, and they will go through that. So um, if you go on to YouTube, and you go into the HMRC YouTube channel, um, I think if you put SSP, COVID related SSP, you'll, you'll come up with it. And that's quite useful if you haven't to do one. Remember, this is only for those who are off on short term sick that aren't furloughed, who are perhaps uh, are off for COVID related reasons and you're uh, claiming, you're paying them statutory sick pay, you can still claim that back, which is the full uh, 14 days that you can claim back. So if anybody's doing that. Uh, completely different uh, now, the NTD agent update number 17 was available. Now, we can't um, actually, uh, you can't get this on gov.uk, it's something that you have to sign up for and they send you an email on it, but it's quite interesting because it's got quite a few topics now. I think we will hopefully, with Verna, be covering a lot of this next week on the Inspire Talk, 
because as you are aware from April, they are starting to extend the pilot scheme for MTD for ITSA, that's income tax self-assessment. And there are some amendments to joining this. Now, while I'm on the agent services account, I will say that um, I spoke to a member this week who was using the links that we put up on our tax agent webpage for uh, signing up for the agent online services account and the SAs and the links don't work. There is now an error. I've tried to follow that through and I put a new link up on there. But if you are following those links through and they don't work, you will come, you will probably end up with an error page because the actual link is hidden so deeply, you can never find it. And I think what it does is it tells you to go back to the government gateway. But if you do then click on the links from the error page, you do eventually get there. So it does work. It just slightly long winded way around it and every time I try and put a link up for you it takes me back to the error page so not the best will in the world but we all know what the HMRC search engines are like anyway so uh, this unfortunately is uh, still an issue. Now you you will only start to see this information once you've signed up for making tax digital for ITSA and but the ASA is now saying on their homepage apparently what the ASA can and can't be used for. I had a quick look at it and I couldn't see that many differences on it, I have to say. Um, the other thing that's happening is once you start to sign up your clients for ITSA, for MTD for ITSA, you can now obtain the authorization to do that before you actually sign up your client to the system because that's where you're going to start linking your software into MTD in exactly the same way as we did for VAT. Um, there's some additional information on your agent's account page. Haven't seen exactly what the information is, but there is some coming on and there will be some more information on it. And for those who actually join the pilot scheme, you will now be able to see, as I understand it, if I read it correctly, that as you do your quarterly updates, the idea is that you will be able to see uh, an increasing tax commitment as to what's going to be due up to that stage. And of course, as you upload each quarter, that's going to change. Now, interestingly enough, there is a uh, consultation out from HMRC at the moment called Timely Payments. Now, basically what they're looking at is at some stage down the line, and it's not going to happen within the next four or five years, I don't think, um, is that they are seriously looking at self-employed people paying their tax slightly more often rather than once or twice a year. And I think the long term, we've thought this for a long time, the long term view is that I think tax will be paid more regularly by the self-employed. And if you're, an, if you're a, 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 a sort of what I call a private individual paying tax uh, once a year, that might also change. We're putting a, a response into the consultation on that one. That's due in, I think, on the 13th of July. And at the moment, it's a call for evidence. They're not looking at it yet. But I just pre-warning that I think, give another five years, let MTD for it to get settled in, get it all working. And I think that will start to, to, to be on the horizon at some stage. But by then, I'm definitely going to be retired. So I'm not having anything to do with that one. Um, right. On to EU VAT. We will be covering this again in the Inspire Tour next week. Remember that um, if you are selling online into the EU, the rules change from the 1st of July. And this one stop shop will be introduced so that if you are selling online and as you know you've got to charge VAT to the client in the um, in their country you can either carry on and pay the VAT separately or you can charge the VAT through the one-stop shop not going to touch on that today because we will be looking at it in, in a bit more detail um, but I have to say I was looking at um, an article from one of our software companies um, and they've got some really, really good information on how that's going to work. So I won't say who they are at the moment, but we will be talking about that next week. Now, this came out this morning and it's literally there. Um, I'm going to quickly whip through it, but I'm just going to leave it there for you to read for a while. Um, there is a relaunch of the agent dedicated support line. Now, those that has been closed down since the start of the pandemic because they've been so busy doing something called COVID-19 uh, queries, but apparently this is being relaunched, but I think it's going to be relaunched slightly differently. And they're going to trial a prioritised support service from, from Monday, from the 14th of June. 
open from eight till six. Uh, similar phone number to the one that they that people need to ring up um, for this to get you authorized the SAIS grant. Um, and what they are hoping is they've set a target for that line to be answered within 10 minutes. But what they're also saying is please don't all ring at eight o'clock in the morning because they won't meet their targets. Try and spread that out throughout the day. And they're going to come back to the representative bodies, that's that's us, about how they're going to perform against this target. Now, for me, and I'm sure a lot of other members, that's got to be a good thing, because at the moment, I think most of you will probably agree with me. If anybody's actually got through to the agent line within 45 minutes, you've done extremely well. I've tried it on several occasions and it's taken me 45 minutes to get through. So the fact that they're now putting more resources into this has got to be great news for us also. And there are some digital services um, available, or they are available now that they've asked us to remind you about. Um, I love this one. Where is my reply tool for tax agents to tell you when you will get a reply on PAYE and self-assessed returns and correspondence? And it says, we have recently done some work to make it more reliable. We're currently looking to add other taxes as well. Um, report a death online, uh, obviously, and that's an interesting one. Request an SA302 for mortgage applications. Now, ICB has been trying for many, many years to become part of the group which is allowed to sign off accounts for mortgages. Um, and there are reasons why that hasn't happened, unfortunately. But remember that if you have a self-employed client who is applying for a mortgage, the SA302, which is the confirmation of the information that's been submitted under their self-assessment self tax return, is acceptable for the mortgage application. So um, that's something to be aware of, that you should be able to apply for that form online and download it, and they can use that as proof of income, because if HMRC has agreed their income and their tax, that can be used for the mortgage application. But that's only for self-employed. It's not for limited companies. And um, a reminder about the personal tax account, your clients uh, can get information um, and they are working on a service to allow your, the tax agent to actually access that information. It does say, uh, see this in for C below. Now I haven't copied that because it's quite detailed, but I will get that out to you at some stage once we know more that's happening. But that is a huge step forward that HMRC are even considering allowing us as agents access to the personal tax account. And that's all to do with data protection and all other sorts of things. But we've been fighting for a number of years now by saying, well, look, our clients want us as agents to be able to deal with everything to do with their income. Um, and it looks as though HMRC are finally starting to listen and we may get some access to that. So that's got to be some good news. Right, some stuff came out from the pensions regulator this week as well, which is interesting. Um, I this morning I listened to a podcast that was uh, between Charles Council, who has been to ICB uh, Summit on a number of occasions and spoke to us, lovely man, um, who is now the uh, CEO of the, of the pensions regulator, and Stephen Timms, who is the current chair of the Work and Pensions com uh, Committee. And I think, Gary, if I'm right, he used to be the Work and Pensions Secretary at yeah, some so, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's now not he's now chairing that and that was a very interesting conversation about the changes that they are looking at that are coming forward to the pension so i thought i would sort of bring this up today um there is a new pension scheme act in force now i haven't gone through that in any great detail i've had a quick look at it but my view is it's aimed at the, at the pensions providers so not so much for our members but there are some implications on that that will affect us for example the TPR have been given additional powers. So they have now have more powers to prosecute individuals and companies and that sort of thing. Um, there is a new uh, area that they can prosecute for those who knowingly or recklessly endanger individuals' pension funds. Now, this is heavily linked into pension scans where people are being contacted to sign up for some information about changing their pension and within five minutes of signing up to this, their entire pension fund has disappeared. And as I understand it, this is a new area that they can start to prosecute people who do this. Um, this has been on the cards for some time. It's called the Pensions Dashboard. And what it means is that individual pension savers 
will be able to go onto this dashboard. They'll, they'll have a sign in, a login, and they'll be able to see exactly where their pensions are, who's using it. Because I wonder how many people who are uh, under, say, auto enrollment, who know they pay into a pension, perhaps can't remember the, you know, the company that they've been signed up with by their employer. So this pensions dashboard should tell them exactly the pension company that their savings are being invested in, and also how much is in their pot currently, which I think is a huge step forward because it gives uh, individuals the option to see exactly where their pensions are. And then they might be able to look at, and what they want to do with that is to <coughs> set some targets <coughs> they think will be required for you to have a reasonable pension when you retire, and you'll be able to use this as a planning tool as well. Um, there, are, there were suggestions raised on that podcast that there's going to be a new pensions bill. Now, it's not going to be introduced yet, but they're starting to look at this probably for around the mid uh, 2020s, that sort of thing. And what they are looking at is that they're going to change the right to transfer a pension. Now, at the moment, you can decide to change your pension at any stage, but I think they are as I understand it, possibly looking to limit this to a period of say 18 months. So once you've been in a pension scheme for 18 months, you may not be able to take your funds out and change it. You may be able to start a new pension with someone else, but there may be some changes to what you can actually do and move your whole pensions. Um, and there are going to be some changes to auto enrollment as well. Um, there is a massive move from, di uh, from uh, direct benefits to direct contribution schemes. Um, I think I did an article on this a month or so ago in the newsletter. Direct benefits are where your pension is based on your length of service and your final year's salary, and is a very good pension. And it's the one that's always been around in public sector services, as well as some of the larger companies. And they're moving to direct contribution schemes, which is where your pension pot is based on how much money your contributions have made where they've been invested. Um, and of course, with stocks and shares going up and down as they do, you're never quite sure what you're going to get for your pension. And the pensions regulator is going to need <coughs> is, is going to be looking into making sure that this is carried out correctly and it, all the scams are you know, stopped as much as possible. Now, the Work and Pensions Committee, this is the one that uh, Stephen Timms sh chairs, um, is opening an inquiry um, into pensions freedoms. Now, these were introduced in 2015, and that's where you can actually take your whole pension pot and go out and spend it on something else. You no longer have to take out an annuity. So you can use your pension pot to buy a property as an investment or just take a holiday around the world or whatever. And they were very concerned about the consequences of this and the effect it was gonna have. But according to that podcast, those concerns haven't really materialized, that people aren't taking their huge pension pots and just spending it on absolutely nothing. Um, but they are looking again about the consequences and risks for, for this entire pensions freedom uh, system that's particularly in relation to scams, how you can access your savings. They're also looking at the large amount of small pension companies and at the TPR meetings I've been at on a couple of occasions, they have talked about um, a pension scheme has to be of a minimum size before they will allow it to continue. Otherwise, they're going to have to start combining pension pots because the smaller pension pots are far, pension schemes are far more at risk than the larger ones. So it's going to be interesting over the next couple of years. Um, they are also looking at setting targets for pension savings. That's what I said about looking at the, um, the dashboards that you're going to be able to see how close you are to if they're going to set you a target or you want to set your own target. Now, this is the first time I've heard this actually said by anybody. Pensions for the self-employment. Now, if you're employed and you fall within uh, the, the various thresholds, you go into auto enrollment, but there is nothing that says as a self-employed person, you have to take out a pension. They're starting to look at that. And they're also having a look at the gig economy. Now, um, there is something at the moment called Project Bloom, which is a multi-agency task force, governments, regulators, financial services, criminal justice agencies. Um, and they've been looking at scans and they are uh, 
what Stephen was saying is he thinks that that should now be formalized and legalized so it actually has a, a proper legislative framework to this and they also want to have a different title because that smacks too much of gardening so they said this morning so they're going to find a different title and everything for it but that's project bloom and this is an interesting one um the tpr are looking at the contribution levels under auto enrollment and this is probably going to come around around the mid 2020s the moment the total percentage uh, minimum from both employee from both the worker and the employer is eight percent of gross salary and they think that is far too low so they are looking at increasing that minimum contribution which again is going to mean that the target pensions are likely to be reached uh, earlier um, and they're also looking at lowering the uh, mandated age for joining and the that there are lower earnings thresholds for actually going into the pension so there's an awful lot of development going along on the pension side at the moment which is not so much it's for really for our members to be thinking about themselves as much as, as what you do for your clients so and as we're all aware the um the court judged against uber and that their drivers are now to be treated as workers and therefore eligible for employment rights including pensions and uber have been having a discussion with the pension provider about actually providing a pension scheme for their drivers and that seems to be going along quite well it's not in place yet but what charles council is going to be doing he said he wants to challenge all other gig economy employees to join into this system so that if you are working in the gig economy i.e with zero rated uh, hours you will have a chance to join into the pension scheme so there's a lot going on on the pensions front at the moment oh and that's it so uh lots happened this week it's been a busy week and we've got a lot of questions never trust anybody who says i've only got a short presentation this well week. it was when i spoke to you two days ago it's just a lot <laughs> come out since then <laughs> all right okay um yeah I, I i sit on the transparency task force and i have to say pension scams are big news there as so many people are being scammed or have been scammed so anything you can do to stop that happening um i mean the thing is if people take advice and that advice turns out to be wrong it depends how the advice is given but actually if they lose all your money often there's nothing you can do about it because that person says well i thought it was the best thing to do at the time but yeah it's, it's bad who else have we got up here uh, i've got a quick question on here when they say the fifth stage grant is based on turnover between april do previous grants claimed need to be included um i don't think so because it's your turnover because what the grant's done is is that supported you through the last year so i think if that turnover has gone down more and more in the last year the grants of course were based on the previous three years so i've got a feeling i haven't seen anything but i've got a feeling the answer to that will be no it, it does say it's it's turnover Got one here from Jane Hijacki. I have a client who received the first two SACE grants, but has repaid one of them back to HMRC already as it wasn't required. How would the amount repaid be shown on the tax return? I'm not sure about that because I don't think there's a box. I mean, I think if it's depending on when it's been repaid, what i have read is that if the grant is repaid you may have to go back and amend your tax return so it may very well be that it's the net result if it was paid back within the last year it may be that you just claim the net amount uh so that the the two grants minus what was paid back i'm not sure on that one i'll i'll see if i can find out on that one um nikki says hang on i've got one above that gary nikki says hi with hmrc payment plans does anyone know if there is a way to get a breakdown of the plan, including how the payments are allocated? I have a client who has a payment plan covering corporation tax, PAYE and VAT, and I have access to corporation tax only, and they won't give me any info regarding payments of the other taxes. I don't know, because assuming if it's a single payment to cover all the taxes, I'm not sure how that would be allocated. Um, under oh and you're not a tax agent for pay because i know some new some of the tax agents for pay can actually see what's being paid and what is owed and sorry what's owed what's been paid and what's been allocated so again i'm not too sure about that one nikki sorry um it's been allocated very randomly says nikki 
But yeah, I think that's probably right. So the answer to that one, Nikki, is I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not too sure. Um, and Nikki said, does the turnover include the SAIS grants? Uh, I think not. I think not is the answer to that one. Um, do you, uh, it was anonymous, says, do you need to be registered as a TCSP, that's a trust and public service provider, to just file confirmation statements for clients? Uh, I'll check on that. I don't think so, unless it's going in in your name or something or other. Um, you know, it's coming, if it's coming directly from you, uh, yeah, I would think it actually, thinking about it again, I'm thinking as I'm speaking here, you might well do. I'll take advice on that and we'll post something up um, and get that. I'm not hundred percent sure. Um, Faye's come back on the, this payments under the payment plan and said, I spoke with HMRC, we time to pay. And we did discuss what was PAYE and VAT before the deal was agreed. So not sure how that's actually going to work. That's one of those machinations going on in HMRC that's uh, hidden away somewhere. And you mentioned about um, self-employed people paying their tax more regularly. Uh, that was part of the discussion we had over the when we had the tax simplification people here and also yeah. about corporation tax uh, rather than just ACT and then final tax catch up at the end of the year with computers being what they are nowadays and everybody um, having put everything on computer. It does mean people have a much uh, quicker access to their figures and a much better understanding of where their profit is going. And I, I think, uh, yeah, I, I can see that one changing as well to yeah. four pay to begin with possibly, but definitely 12 eventually. Well, the, certainly I think that will be one of our recommendations that um, the, the payments, the, the one of the big issues is obviously cash flow. Yeah. Um, HMRC seem to think from their investigations and talking to people that people want to pay their tax more regularly to smooth out their cash flow. Now, if you have uh, regular income and expenditure figures and, and, it, and it's fairly smooth, then it's probably a good idea to pay your tax more often because then you don't end up with a large bill. On the other hand, uh, you could always put that money away in a savings account. I mean, not that you get any interest on it these days. So um, the problem is going to come with paying tax more often is how it's actually going to be sorted out because um, anyone who does year end will know that there are all sorts of tax adjustments that will reduce your tax and then what happens if you've also got um, other forms of income like employment or, or something like that or, or dividends or something how is that going to work out and um, if you've got seasonal income that's an issue because if you have a large quarter where you've got a, you've got all your income and a lot of tax due you pay that and then suddenly you don't have very much income for the next two quarters do you get a rebate so these are all the things that you know we're going to be putting into this um so yeah it, it's going to be a difficult one that one to get right because even if you bring the payments on account instead of having two payments on account in january and july if you make those payments on account quarterly there is still going to come a point in time where you're going to have one year where you're paying your payments on account for the last year and you're paying your payment quarterly for the current in year and it's going to mean at the moment the way it stands it's going to mean that whenever they do a transfer over from the current scheme which is historically paid in installments to being paid in year there is going to be a year where actually you're going to be paying double taxation so i think that's an issue they've got to sort out all the professional bodies are contributing towards that one gary yeah, I, I think if uh, we give everybody a couple of years to get fully automated with their accounts, yeah, I think you can therefore look back at last year and say, based on last year, you should be earning this. And then if somebody says, oh, yes, but my turnover is down by 2% or whatever, um, I think there has to be an adjustment somewhere along the line. Yeah. I Will be worked out but I, I think it will probably be some form of algorithm that does it it will uh, and there'll still be a balancing payment at the end of the year that's going to be due or a rebate or something but it is just the it's the handover that either hmrc are going to lose a year's tax up front which is going to affect their cash flow or individuals are going to have to pay two years because they're paying last year's tax bill that they've just finished and the current year's tax bill so i'm not sure whether 
HMRC lose their cash flow or the client loses their cash flow. It's going to be an interesting one, that one. But my recommendation would be let's get MTD and everything sorted and all the automation sorted before we even start to look at changing the way we pay tax. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a big question. It's not going to be yet. It's not going no. to be yet. They have promised. No. So certainly not this parliament. Okay, well, I think we're probably done on, on most of the questions. I want to do um, just a couple of things here. Firstly, to um, mention Dr. Philip Dunn, who's our non-executive director. Uh, Philip has been sitting on our board now for about 10 years, and he looks after our fiduciary duties. He's a bit of a stickler for our accounts and the way we manage things and everything else. Um, he had a big operation on um, month, uh, Tuesday. We understand he's doing well, but all our thoughts go out to uh, Philip and to Catherine, his wife, and uh, wish him a very speedy recovery. Uh, I spoke... I've spoken a number of times um, on here to Diane Muller from Canada. Diane uh, and, and I have worked together for quite some time now. She keeps me up to date with what's going on in Canada and uh, she comes on to ICB TV, a very welcome visitor. Um, I suggested she came on and really had a chat with us all, tell us all about what it's like to work in Canada and whether bookkeepers are any different, because I can assure you, having been to Canada, you all look the same, really. Um, but very nice people and very committed to what you're doing. And she tells me that she's actually going in for an operation on her knee. So she doesn't want to come on at the moment. I did tell her she doesn't have to kneel. She just comes on. But anyway, um, she, she's got to come on soon and, and talk to us. So that would be really, really nice. Um, and having mentioned things like that, uh, at the weekend, it was um, my uh, boss's um, birthday, my uh, dear wife's birthday, the uh, co-partner, as it were. Um, and it made me think that... I had a conversation with a member recently who said she'd been part of a professional body for, I think, 22 years, and they'd never really made any contact with her. And she'd been with us about three months when we sent her a note saying happy birthday. She was so pleased with it. And I was thinking, oh, well, perhaps I ought to mention birthdays on here, you know, or there might be a way of doing it. And I was informed that I can't do that until I get somebody's permission. So if any of you are having a birthday, you want to send us uh, the OK to announce your birthday, happy to do that in future um but also what happens what about if you're getting married or um i suppose if you want to boast about a divorce but you know whatever and of course if any of you are having babies um or grandchildren or anything like that please send us a picture and we'll we'll try and do something because we're a very social organization we are a community you know we're a big family of people so we can do bits like this it doesn't all have to be serious and uh you know we we can do that uh to which end, I I, um, I asked you a couple of weeks ago about what is it to watch on television that's great, and somebody said The Pact, and I said, well, I sort of had a look at it and didn't think too much of it, but anyway, and I was saying as part of that whole series of Welsh-produced um, uh, uh, programs i've watched something called i was watching something called hinterland now there are only three series of hinterland so i've sort of binge watched a bit and i've just finished it i can highly recommend it it's a brilliant series and you start series one and then in series two you think hold on a minute uh, i've seen that person before and it all interrelates the ending is far better than line of duty i can assure you it's, <laughs> it's a really good ending it's worth hanging in for and it's a really brilliant program um, but having watched it, because it's quite deep, you know, and everything else, uh, June and I decided we wanted something a little bit more frivolous. And we were skimming through Netflix, trying to find something. And in the end, we got we thought we're never going to get in, settle on anything. You know what it's like. So we jumped in for something um, called Love Punch, which is a bit sickly. It's um, it's a Piers Brosnan film and it's got Emma Thompson in there, and Timothy Spall, Celia Imry. It's a bit of a laugh. You know, it's OK. Um, and just to follow and to take it at one stage further, at the end of that, um, I can recommend the uh, theme, which was uh, In My Arms by Teddy Thompson. Now, many of you will know In My Arms uh, by Teddy Thompson. It's a, it's a lovely record. And that came at the end and reminded of it. I hadn't seen it for some time, heard it for some time. So try that. Because we watched Piers Brosnan in that, last night we were told this is 98% film what you ought to be watching etc we watched something called long way down that's a little bit different it's still a comedy um it's about four people who meet at the top of a very tall building when they all want to throw, jump off and commit suicide and they start off with them debating which of them is going to go first and not be selfish i need to go well hurry up you go because i need to go in a minute as well um 
but it's it's quite a, it's a lovely film. It's very nice, and it it sort of sorts itself out, and and there is a sort of camaraderie in what they're all trying to do. Um, but so so have a look at that. That's called Long Way Down. And just to keep up with the themes, the the um, there's the end of that is uh, there's a, a song called No More Running, and that's by a man called Michael Kiwanuka. It's it's a little different. Now I came across Michael Kiwanuka Kiwanuka um, at New Year when I was watching Jules Holland's Hogmanay because he sang there um, her song called You Ain't the Problem. And he's a young guy. It's a, it's a little different. It's very mu well, musical. It's a bit silly thing to say, but you know what I mean. So I, I can re recommend those. Uh, so there we are. And <laughs> we could do with a good book editor because I keep getting asked, what books do you suggest? I don't read books. I know I'm sitting in the library, but you know, that, that, that's yeah. all shit. I, uh, I, I can't get into books at all, never have been a, a, a much of a reader. I've started so many and never finished them. And um, The Mysterious Case of the Dog in the Night or something or other, I, I really enjoyed that, but I, I got sidetracked and I've, I've never finished it, so I really don't know how it ends. Um, so we need a book editor. Anybody out there, a, an ardent reader who gets to a couple of books a month or something or other, who'd like to come on and give us a quick rundown for five minutes, you know, let's, let's do it like they do on the... The Richard and Judy show or something like that. So, so let me know what you want on that. Um, it's also, we are also putting together a, uh, a, a playlist of records specifically for bookkeepers. Um, we've sort of shied away from money for nothing, but money, 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 and this sort of stuff. And uh, it all adds up, and, uh, and whatever title it is. So anyway, if you've got any suggestions for that, please also let us know. And many times now I've asked for any ideas anybody might have for uh, something else for us to do on air. Uh, and a lot of the suggestions that you've given us, and the biggest one was, can I see how everybody else is doing it, has already been covered under uh, the Inspire Tour. So thank you very much for that. That has been very useful. You're going to get five completely different but very similar story because book, I always say bookkeepers are bookkeepers are bookkeepers. But actually, when you listen to what you've gone through to get where you are and why you decided to do it and now what you want to do in the future, um, there are some differences, but it, it, they're all good. Now, I haven't seen these actual ones coming up, so I'm, I'm sort of hedging my bets a little bit. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, they're normally very, very popular and, and you like to see how other people have done it. And, uh, you know, so, yeah, let's... Uh, I'm sure it's going to be a fantastic week. Jackie, um, you agree? Yeah, Gary, there's a couple of things. That the Judith's come back saying time is good. Time. Is? Time. T-I-M-E. Oh, right. Okay. Um, and congratulations to Carol Gibson. Became a granny for the first time last month. Oh, great. Welcome. Welcome to the world of grandmothers. It's the best place to be. <laughs> congratulations, Carol. Yeah, grandchildren are great. Um, yeah, Carol. Uh, Why don't we give them back? Where, where's the photograph? Come on, let, we'll carry a photograph. It won't be, ne it won't be next week because we're not here. Just to repeat, we're not back now for a fortnight. But uh, yeah, let, let, let's get that up there. And uh, great, fantastic. And uh, you're all very quick to show us pictures of your dogs. Let's see if we can get you picturing the kids as quickly. So. Right, Jackie, I think we've probably done that. I we? think we've covered everything that's gone up, yeah. Yeah, so thank you very much for joining us again and uh we will be very very busy next week it, you'll uh, those of you who haven't yet booked there is still an opportunity it's not like the um physical face-to-face uh, -face meetings where you've got to be booked a, um a sort of a month in advance because we need to get an extra seat and an extra lunch and all the rest of it that's all down to you now because it's virtual so you can get booked in but don't miss it it really is useful the stuff that's on there you can pick and choose and even if you only want to see one day's worth of it, you know, at, at 60 odd pound, it's it's actually really, really cost effective. But if you can manage to sit through all five days of it, then you are going to learn so much. You're going to be a better person at the end of it, I might say. But anyway, so uh, can I just weekend and yeah. have uh, have a lovely, uh, inspiring week and we'll see you a week on Friday. Thank you, Jackie, once again. Lovely to be here. See everyone next week. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Take care. Bye.